Hello viewers. Today I'm going to turn my superiorometer onto um, an argument that has raged within the progressive rock world versus the normal world for years and years. For a normal person, Genesis is the band with the funny walk that does tunes like Invisible Touch, right? Um, the album that Invisible Touch was on, I think, sold around about 15 million copies and Genesis are one of the biggest selling artists of all time. Um, such was the success of Genesis in the 1980s that uh, Phil Collins was able to go on to have a film career and become a celebrity, a household name. Um, but all us within the progressive rock world know that that's not proper Genesis. The proper Genesis is the one with Peter Gabriel and Steve Hackett in it. Now, I sat and wondered whether this was actually the case. Which is the best Genesis? Is it the Peter Gabriel Genesis or is it the Phil Collins Genesis? And I thought it would be wonderful to be able to set that to rights, to be able to come up with the objective answer, because this is why we have the superiorometer here, is to be able to do these sorts of things and get an objective answer. And anybody who thinks that um, it's really just a satire and I'm really just poking fun and trying to make the point that there is no real objective better or not better in music, then you're an absolute fool. I would never do such a thing. This is a very important machine because it gives us objective answers about art and music. It's very, very important. Um, I made it and I take the credit for it. So I'm going to feed in now. I've been working on the superiorometer. It, it gave me a bit of jip on the last video. And so I've been working on it. We've, I've been oiling it. Um, I don't I don't need to, to calibrate it anymore um, because I've, uh, I, you know, I may have forgotten that bit and not prepared the albums, but <laughs> um, it could be that or it could be just the fact that when I've worked on it, um, I've, now we don't need to calibrate it, it knows. It, it, what I did is I hooked it up to the internet, you see. And so now I don't need to calibrate it that way. I can just go and search using its AI um, skills and it can go and search the whole of the internet and work out who's the best just with all that information that's there. That's very, very important. Uh, very important use of the internet there, being able to work out what the best is um, until they w you start using it on us and work out which of us are the best. But well, that's another question, isn't it? Maybe I should ask the superiorometer that. But you never know. Now I've cooked it up to the internet. It well may well be um, undermined by the powers that be. They may have gone in and tampered with it, and they may want to champion Collins Genesis. This is a, I'm, I'm, that's a worry I've got now. Shall we see what happens? Shall we see what? So, so I'm go I'm going to feed it. I'm going to feed it in now. Right, here we go. It's, just turn that knob. Turn that there. Right. Good. They're in. They're in. They're in the superiorometer. So um, the superiorometer is going to mark them each on 10 parameters. 10 parameters. That's why it can not be questioned. You know, you may say what's better or not, but you're just going on your gut feeling and what you like. That's not scientific. This has got 10 parameters in it. I have tweaked the parameters in here a little bit, which obviously makes all the ones I've done before completely invalid, but don't worry about that or think about that. Right, so we're going to start, about, start with the first one, which is of course, innovation. We have the Gabriel, um, progressive rock band that emerges in 1969 and goes on to make groundbreaking albums including Foxtrot which which features a very early example of a sidelong through composed composition uh, on Lamb Lies Down in Broad Broadway they brought in Peter Gabriel to use all these advanced production methods um, they are very important for integrating theatre into um, rock music which then crops up with bands like Kiss and all those bands so without a doubt the the um, Gabriel era um, Genesis is, was highly innovative. Not as innovative as bands like King Crimson or Soft Machine, all those bands, but still they were a progressive rock band that took what bands like King Crimson had done and grabbed that baton and ran with it. And without a doubt, they were innovative. Now, um, I'm trying to think how the 
Phil Collins' band is innovative. Great bands, some great pop songs there. But did they do did they do anything innovative? They must have. They can't have not have done something in something innovative with all those albums sold. On Mama, Phil Collins integrates an approach from hip hop, which is a very early example of non hip hop groups, non rap groups bringing in that style. Which Aerosmith then do with, oh, come on, I've got to go down there now. Right, so it's obvious that for innovation, the Gabriel era progressive rock band gets a one, and the Phil Collins ones gets a big zero. Let's move on to the next one then. So now we've got technical ability. Right, so looking at what the superiorometer's chucking at me, both bands were very technically able, absolutely, without a doubt. And you would think it would be 50-50. But what it's pointing out is that when Gabriel left and then Hackett left, the band brought in Chester Thompson on drums and um, Daryl Stumer on guitar. These are musicians that came from the jazz rock world. And as we know, jazz rock musicians will always trump a progressive rock musician when it comes to technical ability. And so actually, when we look at the band that's on Seconds Out and Three Sides Live and also playing on some of the tracks on the studio albums, or at least influencing those, the technical ability of that band actually goes up after Gabriel leaves. Um, now, I'm going to just pause now so all the progressive rock fans can go nuts. Happy? Okay, have you got that out of your system? So we have a resounding one going to the Phil Collins um, Genesis bands. I'm just going to call it for now going to Collins and I'll call it Gabriel, Collins and Gabriel. So now we have a big one, a big fat one going to the Collins band for technical ability. Right, so we then move on to charisma. Now Phil Collins is, must be a charismatic man because he became a pop star, didn't he? You know, I know he looks like a little fat bald bloke, but he was able to front band become one of the biggest selling artists in his own right. But so did Peter Gabriel. And I would argue that what Peter Gabriel did in the 1980s is even more charismatic and visually interesting and personality, you know, interesting. But of course, what they did in the 1980s is what Gabriel did in the 1980s is not what we're talking about. We're talking about what they did in the bands. Now, uh, yes, Genesis my hat may have their funny walks and their spitting image things in their videos, but I think Gabriel goes down in history for his visual imagery, his personality, and his magnetic charisma. He truly is a charismatic artist. So again. The point here goes to Gabriel, and we get a big one for that. Now, we move on to the fourth one, which is composition. And um, a lot of what Collins Genesis did actually is compositionally rooted in the stuff that they developed in the progressive rock band. When we listen to something like Turn It On Again, um, and we listen to what Tony Banks is doing on keyboards or the time signatures, it's as complex as anything they did in the Gabriel band. It's just been tightened up and it's got a pop hook on it. Um, now we could argue that Genesis, Genesis's ability to take pro progressive rock approaches and integrate them into a popular music form that then goes on to sell millions and millions of records shows great composition of skill and I believe it does. And I do think that when you go to some of the later albums, even something as awful as calling all stations, there is a maturity in the composition there, but we cannot argue against their legacy as a progressive rock band, writing tunes like Watcher of the Skies, Cinema Show, uh, Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, um, Supper's Ready, Musical Box. These are compositionally groundbreaking and brilliant tunes. And I think also we must say, that Steve Hackett brought a compositional genius to the band when Gabriel was in it, as did Gabriel. So again, we get a big fat one going to the Gabriel band. Hopefully the way this is going at the moment is appeasing uh, some of the prog fans out there. Right, I've got a new category here. 
Can't remember which, which, what I got rid of. I think I got rid of like album covers or something, which I thought this was a bit bit silly, and replaced it with something which is a bit more important, which is live performance. Which of these was the best live band? Well, the fact is, is that we have basically one live album with Genesis, Genesis Live. We've got two classic live albums um, to, to, to consider, Seconds Out and um, uh, Three Sides Live. We also have the um, live recording of Lamb Lies Down on Broadway that's on one of the box sets. I've listened to them all. They're all stunning. Genesis were an incredible live band, without a doubt, and they were always an incredible live band. And I don't think we can give a, a, um, a point to one or the other. So here, for the first time on this superiorometer assessment, we get 50-50, 0.5 each. Right, so we then get um, influence. Now, the superiorometer is having a bit of a problem here. It's it, 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 you have, haven't you? You've gone wrong. Hang on. Let's just put some stuff in here. You bad superiorometer. All right. It's got a, it's got a confusion here between innovation and influence. As I always say, innovation is not the same as influence. You can be innovative and do something new, but um, you cannot be innovative, um, take someone else's ideas, but then influence the rest of music history and and i think um what we have here is the influence has said oh hang on yes i can see what's happened just doing a few minor adjustments to my superiority oh my god uh it's 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 a, it's a frightening thing using this live in front of a camera in front of you guys but anyway obviously the influence goes to um the progressive rock band the Gabriel Band. Of course it does, because that lays the groundwork to not only um, what Progressive Rock does, but also what Genesis does. It's a bit of an unfair one, this, when, you, when you're looking at a band which is the same band, because obviously the later band will always be influenced by the earlier band, and this is a thing that's just messing it up at the moment. It's trying to compare itself to itself and it doesn't like it so I'm, I'm just going to do something hang on I'm just going to do something right let's just recalibrate this spirit of dark and lonely water. But no one expects to find me here. It seems too ordinary. But that pool is deep. The boy is showing off. The bank is slippery. Only a fool would ignore this. It's the perfect place for an accident. Oh, I love this in the Quick, get that big to get out. Since Sorry about that. I had to um I had to shut down a little bit the the whole thing went completely wrong, absolutely completely wrong. I was trying to sort it out and it just, it just, it's, it's a terrible mess in here now. But anyway, we have a result here for influence and the one goes to eventually, finally, now I've got it up and going, it goes to the Gabriel area band. Right, so we now go on to production. I love Genesis's production. Um, I prefer their production to bands like King Crimson and Yes, they have a beautiful sound all the way through their career. Um, I think um, 
even when we go back to an album like Nursery Crime back in 1971, it's a beautiful sounding album. I don't know why that sounds so good. And they never um, relent. It always sounds great. The only album that I have a problem with the production is, is Selling England by the Pound. I, I find that a little bit dry. It doesn't seem to have the sheen and beauty of Foxtrot or Nursery Crime or Lamb Lies Down. I'm sure I'm the only person who thinks that. But that's always sullied my opinion of that album i think if if it sounded more like nursery crime that would probably be my favorite album but i do think selling in by the pan does meander a little bit and it hasn't got all the brilliant songs on that everyone thinks but that's another thing um but in terms of production the groundbreaking production with lamb lies down on broadway i think that's an incredible album and an incredible thing to pull off but also throughout the 80s genesis are pushing the limits of what you could do in a studio they've got the money they've got the interest they've got the ability um so i think um we get a split here and the superior object is saying the same thing we got 0.5 each for production we now move on to cd sales album sales record sales well i think um genesis the gabriel band i did look this up and it was they had sold around about 10 million albums which is incredible um, all those early Genesis albums sold at least a million copies with some of them selling three million copies. But then when you move on to the Collins Genesis, um, We Can't Dance and Invisible Touch are, are both coming in at over 10 million sales. And then the other albums from the 80s are doing six or five million. The total sales for Genesis is around about 150 million. And so um, the progressive rock Gable era, it's... It, 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 um, is a tiny percentage of their record sales so obviously we're going to get a big fat point going over to the collins era band for that one right now we're going to have the great to crap ratio all right so um genesis came out with their first album from genesis to revelation um which was produced by jonathan king that's a it's not a bad album it's just not a genesis album there's nothing wrong with it it is what it is it's sort of psychedelic psychedelic 60s pop but then from then on, all the albums are brilliant. Trespass is, is, is great. Musical Box, I'm um, sorry, um, Nursery Crime, Masterpiece. Genesis Live, Masterpiece. Foxtrot, Masterpiece. Selling England by the Pound, Masterpiece. Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Masterpiece. They're all absolutely brilliant. Now, if we move to the Genesis Collins Band, did, did, did they ever um, do anything truly terrible? Or, or, do you want me to carry on? The Duke's wonderful, brilliant album. Genesis, the album that just called Genesis, I really like that album. Um, Abacab, I love the tune Abacab, but that album's a bit hit and miss and some people absolutely hate that album. Invisible Touch is a, is a great pop album. You know, but I don't like it. Um, we Can't Dance. This is a great pop album. And they do stretch out a little bit there. You know, it's, it's undeniable that uh, the point goes to um, the Gabriel era band when it comes to this great to crap ratio. And then we come to my personal taste. And this is where you're going to be surprised. I grew up at my age, I'm 55, so in 1980 I was 12. The first Genesis I heard was actually Abacab, Turn It On Again, and I went out and bought Three Sides Live, which I absolutely loved, and to this day it's one of my favourite albums of all time. I do really like the Collins era Genesis, right? And I could not differentiate between the two. So I'm afraid, Proggers, and you're going to call me not a proper Progger now, I've gone 50-50 on that. So we now can go and get a result. So I'll just feed that in to the superiorometer. Which has not behaved well today, have you? Oh, so we have a result, and it is the Gabriel era progressive rock band. Prog wins. Prog wins over the masses with their cruddy pop music that might sell loads. But in the end, what's better is good old songs about, you know, Lamia and, um, you know, dead Edwardians coming back to abuse your kids on a track that's a whole side long. That's what we want. You know, that's what we want. We've won. Prog has won. 
So you were worried then. You were worried when um, the technical ability one went to them. You were worried. Were you thought I was I was going the wrong way? But it's not down to me, is it? It's down to the superiorometer, and the superiorometer has spoken, and that's the end of the video. So if you like this video, please like it, um, and put a like on it. Go on, please put a like on it. You know, it, it helps me. It helps the algorithm. Um, if you want to see more, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And if you want to support me, because I'm having to buy all these parts now for the superiorometer, and elastic bands cost money, right? So if you want to support me, you can either become a patron, which is jam full of all sorts of bonkers content over on my Patreon. That's at Patreon, and the link is down below there. But also now you can support me, but just by dropping a few pennies in my tip jar, my PayPal tip jar, which is also linked down below. And that few people have been dropping some stuff in which is very exciting because I now have a bit of money to be able to spend and as you can see I have a new camera I have a new big furry microphone and you know I might even go and buy a light thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one